Hey, Diana, your favorite astronaut. So you already have some experience using your sea star. Then you go probably on social media and start looking at other people's images and you say, well, mines don't look as good as that one. Well, there are many things to consider and this video is about what can I do to prep better for a successful imaging session. The shooting location. Sometimes an imaging session can be two or three hours. I leave them for more, four, five, six hours if I can. We need to be aware of possible <laughs> obstacles and walls and things that are going to obstruct as the telescope rotates following the target. Try to avoid all excessive vibrations as wooden decks, uh, places where there's a lot of cars you know, around or people walking around is going to affect, that's for sure. I'd be sure to have a steady tripod if you're using a different tripod than the one that comes uh, with the sister. Don't forget to level the tripod before you start. This tutorial includes a PDF uh, with pretty much everything and all the settings that I have set here. So it's easy for you to follow. And those are available for the members of the channel. If you are a member, go ahead and look on the perk section. And there you are going to find the link for the PDF so you can download it. The weather, the scene conditions, it's time to finally master this. It's very easy. The regular weather report is not going to be exactly what we need. There are other apps that are going to be more specific. And I made several videos on this. And the ones that I recommend are Clear Outside and my all-time favorite, it's Astrospheric. And here you can see the scene conditions, exactly what is going to happen. Uh, it can fail sometimes too, but it overall is very accurate. And that uh, what you want to try to avoid it's that uh, baby blue light colors on the map. Anything below average conditions, seeing conditions and high clouds and all that, it's going to be a problem. It's going to show in the photos. You can also take a picture, if you're not sure, with your phone. And the phone, it's going to show a lot uh, of the uh, high clouds and the hazes. And now let's take a look at what the atmospheric scene conditions can do. So for average scene, probably you're going to get less than 10 stars visible to the naked eye. So when you don't see too many stars, that is an average scene condition, probably going more into bad scene condition. For good scene conditions, you are going to see 10 to 30 stars visible to the naked eye. And sometimes it's like all the stars are there screaming. I mean, they just look amazing. Great seeing conditions uh, are going to happen. And this is when you see more than 50 stars uh, that are visible to the naked eye. Use your eyes too. You can tell. And obviously, we cannot forget about the moon. The moon is beautiful, but it causes a lot of problems for astrophotography. And the combination with the moons and the cloud plus glow, it's a no. Uh, definitely not good for astrophotography. But the moon plus average uh, scene conditions, you will have to do a test photo and see what happens there. You can also try to find a target that it's on the opposite side of the moon as far as possible. Watch for the moon faces and the percentage uh, of illumination. The sky object obviously is crucial, so you will have to find that sky object prior if you want to get some great images. Tonight's best is not the best. That happens pretty often. Many occasions is correct and many other occasions is not. So be sure to look for that latitude and the location of that sky object uh, and have at least two more in mind just in case. Uh, normally I, I do um, the sky object that I want to photograph and I may do a galaxy have it on the, as a sub and the backup and another nebula and a star cluster, just to be sure that I don't lose that special night that sometimes they're very difficult to get. 
Now I want to use this diagram that I find it very good. Under 20 degrees, that's very low in the horizon. And that's when the poor sink, seen conditions can start happening from atmospheric turbulence. The structural light pollution, it's a problem. It's very low, so we're going to be getting... Uh, those lights too. And the low clouds at a distance and of course the air glow. So between 20 degrees and 30, well, it is an ideal imaging angle, but you can also have uh, a lot of gradients that uh, can show up, but they are typically you know, during post-processing, you can get rid of them. And then we have that that range right there where we're seeing here, uh, the telescope, that it's ideal for the device itself. And we're going to minimize the atmospheric turbulence and we're going to probably clear most of the structural <laughs> problems. Uh, we're going to probably get less light pollution, the low clouds and air glow. So this is ideal. And then we have 75 degrees latitude up to 85. It's still okay. I have sometimes problems there. The telescope gets in a very tough position. Uh, but that still, that range is good. And then above 85, that since the object passes the zenith, the sea star is going to definitely start failing. Well, and the big question, how much data do we need? It's going to depend mostly on your skies and the darker the sky, the lower the portal level, the less data you need for a clean image. But most of us don't live in those areas, so we have to deal with a lot of light polluted skies, which means you're going to need longer integration time to compensate the, uh, for the sky glow and also the loss of contrast. And also learn to edit better. So it's start using Cyril and Pixing Side, uh, set the Astro Suite on an excellent dark sky the minimum time that you're going to need is from two to four hours a rural sky four to six hours suburban eight to twelve hours and a city sky <laughs> uh, 20 hours plus as part of taking better images it's important to know the classification of the target that you're going to capture. Another topic that is very important to consider, of course, is the filter that is going to be used for the different sky objects. And the uh, Seastar S50 has an integrated narrowband dual filter. And you will have to uh, look uh, in the Sky Atlas or an, on a separate app. You can look for the uh, specifications on the different sky objects. For emission nebulas, uh, you have the filter on. Reflection nebulas, you can have it off. Planetary nebulas on. Supernova remnant on dark nebulas off, galaxies off, and star clusters off. You can do a 50% data with the filter activated. In the left image, we have 60 minutes of data with the filter activated, which is going to enhance the red hues. Without the filter on the right, brings out the blue reflections and the dark nebula. One of the most important settings to consider and think before you're going to start your imaging session is that exposure time. Obviously, extremely bright targets with the bright core or galaxies, um, you want to do uh, less. A lot of people like to do 10 seconds. Uh, for most of those bright uh, objects, I use the 20 seconds. Well, in astrophotography, your real total exposure time is not always equal to the total time you spend shooting. The difference comes down to efficiency. How much of your session actually results in usable data? To calculate the total exposure time, you have to know the exact number of stacked frames multiplied by the exposure time per frame. Let's say that there were 48 stacked frames. And the exposure time per frame was 15 seconds. Then it's 48 frames by 15 seconds equals 720 seconds, which is 12 minutes. That is your total exposure time. I hope you are enjoying this tutorial. And if you want to join my membership program, you just go 
on my channel and click on join and follow the steps and cost three dollars and 99 cents a month that's all and it helps a lot to keep this channel going thank you for your support